I've been working on shows like Adventure Time and DuckTales and Hit Goat Banana Crickets, like all these shows for kids. And I think part of the reason I wanted to make an over the top violent, crazy thing is because I do love cartoons and I, and I do wish they could push the limits a little more, and especially with my day job, just always working on kid stuff, kid stuff. Um, it's fun to push that, but also, I've always kind of been in the underground comic scene. They tend to be a little bit less concerned about marketability. And so in my brain, it's just like, oh, okay, so I'm going to make a comic that's super, super hyper-violent, and uh, because that's my instinct, and that's what's fun to draw, drawing contorted faces, and, you know, eyeballs popping out of skulls and stuff, like, it's always been really fun. We were, we were talking about it earlier, like, both of, like, some of the earliest, like, Ray Durham movies we ever watched was, like, Robocop and stuff, and, like, just, and yesterday we were talking about it as well, though, like, we're just, like, I think our natural sense of humor is just, like, kind of lands up down there, and so, like, I think this is, just, like, the type of thing that we do, like, uh, yeah, like, we're, we're I, I don't know how It's a natural say. progression yeah. from like what we've been, because we've been writing together for like 10 years. And uh, we used to write a book called Pirate Club that was put out by Slave Labor Graphics. And then you self published. And we also self published. So it's just like, you know, it started out with kids kind of uh, being rascals. And then, like, uh, let's have them start killing each other. Oh, let's have them start, you know, like, uh, you know, killing Santa Claus. And so it, was, it just ramped up to where now it's like, I want to tell a superhero story. But i got to make it super violent. Like, that's, that's a, a yeah. must. So what are your favorite cartoons? Did you like things like Ren and Stimpy or that type of thing? Yeah, I, uh, anime. Like, I don't watch a ton of anime now, but in junior high, I was watching like Ninja Scroll and Fist of the North Star, yeah. and Vampire Hunter D, and like Akira. Yeah. It's a violent imagery. Yeah, yeah. I also, like, one of the cartoons I like, though, that doesn't necessarily fit in, but maybe it does because it's like a parody, but it's the tick. I always love that noise. Yeah. What kind of reaction do you hear directly? I or love the reactions. Really? I love the reactions. Like, the people that, like, I feel like we're not giving any middle, middling opinions. Okay. It's <laughs> like, I hate this book. It's terrible. Or, like, this is my new favorite book. It's been the pick of the week in a lot of comic yeah. shops. And, yeah, yeah. Which, I'm blown away by the response. The, the shops have ordered it in quantities that I didn't see on the horizon. We, you know, we've been getting fan mail and tweets from people who've read it and really enjoyed it. And neither of us were expecting this kind of reaction at all. At all. We're doing the second printing already. Yeah, yeah. I think they could cut us like September second or something. That's by the middle of the month. Yeah, and I guess probably timed around on the second issue comes out. I think they're going to ship on the same day. Yeah. So September twenty fifth is when issue two comes out. Two to catch up if they missed the first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so it's been really fun. So thank you guys for picking it up. And I, I would just say the same thing. Like I didn't expect the reaction, but I feel like I've heard so many positive things. I saw so many people who have no reason to like the book, like picking it for their shop displays and stuff. You grew up, like as far as comics go, I was eleven when when Youngblood number one came out. So I grew up reading like Savage Dragon is like one of my favorite comic books of all time. It's still going. It's still going strong. I actually did a story in the 25th anniversary issue of Savage Dragon 225. I had a short comic in there. But, um, so, like, we were reading Spawn had, like, a child molester getting murdered, like, in the first four issues. And, like, Savage Dragon's cutting bad guys up with chainsaws. And so, yeah, like, that along with, like, watching Robocop at, like, age eight. That'll so <laughs> it really, it really did set things up, and, and the parody just comes from, I think, just from. And I, I don't want to seem like our goals are too lofty or I think too highly of myself or anything, but uh, that's the caveat to this next thing. Um, we read so many superhero stories, and my art style wouldn't necessarily fit, fit with something that is more traditional, like you know, like something. 
that Mark Miller would write, or something that, like Jonathan Dickman would write, or something like that. So it doesn't fit that traditional superhero mold, so we had to kind of subvert it a little bit for it to not just seem bland or, or just run of the mill. So we had to make it weird, we had to make it crazy because of the way I draw. At least that was my thing. I, I was uh, laid off from a job and I was working from home uh, doing some freelance for different stuff and I became pretty good friends with Scotty Young to where we were Skyping like every day. And Jason just lived a few blocks away from me, so he would just join us on these Skype conversations. And Scotty was developing right in Curryland at the time, and I was actually working on Pretty Violent in its very, very infant stages. So there was just a lot of like back and forth, back and forth, and Scotty and Jason just really hit it off. So about a month's worth of back and forth and emails and just like this idea could be mixed with this idea. So it was very much that Genesis. Idea yeah, yeah. throwing back and forth stage. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, and then he decided, like, we were, yeah, we were working together, and then he was like, listen, like, I've worked with writers my entire career, and I want to start doing stuff on my own. So he's like, then I, you know, I want to just take this stuff and go off. Yeah, and you were a book. Which was like, <laughs> you're more harsh on yourself. Yeah. yeah. What was the title of the book? Am I allowed to say? Um, yeah. I'm so I wrote a book called Derek Hunter is a Fuck, my name being Derek Hunter, uh, and basically it stemmed from going to comic conventions and just with my cartoony, kind of rated R Saturday morning cartoon stuff, I would go to conventions and I would notice that like every comic artist, independent comic artist, it shows like A or SPX or like, uh, like the smaller independent shows where you know, I kind of live too. That my stuff wasn't resonating with people, and I was just kind of like talking to my wife on the phone. It's like, oh man, just I love it, but everything here is like autobiographical stuff, and that's just not my vibe. Like, it, like, and you know, I wish that I fit in better with this like independent crowd, and but it's like not my style. And she's like, well, you could just make a comic about how big of an asshole you are. And she was right, and so it's kind of a parody on autobiographies. It's just me talking about all the ways I was a horrible boyfriend and roommate in high school and college. And I actually look back on that now and I read it and I just cringe because it's like, oh, those aren't funny things. <laughs> but it, it is pretty terrible, but uh, you know, it's reflective of where I was at the time that those events happened, and reflecting of the time I was at when I drew it, and now I've moved on and become a better person, which we all cross our fingers, happens throughout life, where we can look at our 20-year-old self and just go, what's that? You're a fuck. That was the, like the takeaway of the end of the comic, right? Or, like, which is like, I've changed a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but I feel like me now wouldn't even draw that book. I'm like, yeah, I don't need people to know these stories. Yeah. yeah. Well, speaking of writing, it must be, at times, difficult being a writer and artist being kind of end up working on your own a lot. Mm -hmm. Now you guys do connect with the people Scotty and Skype and you're working in the same area sometimes. But how do you still manage to connect and not go, I know for some people who start they, they, they can't keep up with it. They go like, I can't, I can't do this. I can't sit here for like eight, ten hours a day. Yeah. It's not for them. They find yeah. out that maybe this isn't for me. How do you manage to stay with it? Keep that interest to be able to... Well, that's why we work together. Okay. Yeah. Like, it gives us an opportunity I mean, to, like... one thing. You still have a lot of time to work on your own, though. Yeah. I actually think it is, like, dedication and stuff. Like, <laughs> I know that, like, um, on projects, like, that I'm, like, pouring myself into, it's, like, because you just care about the project so much, you want to tell this story, you know, you only have so much time, and you just, like, sacrifice other stuff. Like, my job right now is relaxed enough. <laughs> That, like, I spend, like, two hours in the morning working on comic pages, and I just sit on the porch with my iPad and, like, have my morning coffee with my wife after the kids get off to school. So, I'm just talking with my wife and drawing, and then I go to work, and I draw on the train on the way to work, and then I draw on the way home from, the from work on the train, and then after the kids go to bed, maybe I'll work a little bit. So, I'm usually working, like, three to four hours a day tops on comics okay. because it's not my full-time job so um, but yeah sometimes it can 
initially, Woody Brown started out as like a hobby, but then once Image Comics came in as a publisher, it's like, oh no, I have to like, this is not just something I do for fun, like I have to do it when I'm tired, or I have to do it when I'm not feeling well. So, and being isolated can be hard, but I'll just hop on Skype with Jason, or yeah. with Ryan Opley, or Scotty Young, or somebody like that, and just hang out and talk. I feel the same way, like, where, but I, I feel like, like, as far as writing, though, goes, I feel like, even, like, when, there are so many times, like, we meet, and, like, we have ideas and stuff, but then I feel like we do have to, like, be isolated to, like, nail stuff yeah. down. You'll go off and write the script. Yeah, yeah. You'll kind of, like, really, like, nail out almost page by page what happens in broad strokes. And then Jason goes up, writes a script, and then we meet again and, like, fine tune it. But to me, yeah, to me, it's just, like, that isolation is just totally necessary because, like, whenever we were talking, like, the, we were in meeting earlier today about the project and stuff because we don't see each other in person that often. And it's, like, and that's just, like, kind of fun and, like, you get preliminary stuff, but you don't, like, you don't, like, do all the stuff like that. Like, the stuff you need, like, to be isolated for. I have, like, a full-time job in Salt Lake that's super boring. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> And uh, and then I just spend all of the rest of my hours, uh, you know, talking about comics and writing scripts and stuff. And, uh, yeah. And I actually, I don't, like, I used to do, like, uh, blogging and uh, work for websites and, like, local magazines and stuff, like, doing articles. And I, like, I really don't like doing it that much. And so then I just got a more normal job to do other than work stuff that's my own writing. Yeah. And like, or I just like, yeah, it's, it's like a comics. Is, yeah, like comics is a thing I want to write. And like, I'm not even, I'm not a very big fan of writing like essays and stuff like that. Yeah. And that, I do the same thing where it's like working in animation. I used to take animation freelance all the time. But now it's like, I don't want to draw for other people. I want to draw for me in my free time. And it's kind of like a similar thing. It's like, he's not going to write an article for Slug Magazine, and I'm not going to do, like, a few little background pieces for, like, the Invader Zim movie or whatever. As much as I love all the people that work on it and stuff, it's like, oh, I got to I gotta work on my own thing. One thing that I do like doing, though, is, like, just being a sort of story consultant to, like, people around me. Oh, so it's like, when you have a different... So, like, we have a community of artists and stuff that meet up and like when they're working on projects I like looking at them and like kind of giving them uh, advice. not advice I don't I'm not smart enough to give people advice but I just like my ideas and stuff and so like I, I don't know that doesn't mean that I'm freelancing or anything but I do like kind of like telling people what they're doing <laughs> well, let's talk about advice as writers artists what did you learn the hard way what is something that got pain, the struggle, but you learn something that is you learn the hard way? I think there, there's a good lesson that I learned this week that I was going to like have this like teary eyed like Twitter rant about that I didn't. And it was, it was just that like, I told you about it already, but it's just that like critics do not matter. <laughs> oh, this and, is a good and, thing to go. It's an opinion. Nobody's still. Please. Please focus and, on and, him and this conversation. And, and, fans, <laughs> and fans mean the whole world to me. Like, yeah. I love hearing what people think about things, and I hate hearing what people think who are forced to read something who aren't seeking it out. I see. And, uh, and, like, and, the, and it just means so much different things to me. And, like, uh, and I never really had that big of a taste of it because... With I Hate Fairly, it wasn't the same way, and so like this is kind of my first taste of it, where I felt it was like more personal and stuff, and uh, that was my big takeaway. Do you have an example? Uh, I mean, not to shit on critics, but they serve a purpose. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a couple of things that I've learned fairly recently is uh, I spent too much. Like I've always wanted to draw comics since I was like ten. I spent way too much time learning how to draw and not learning how to write, like, concurrently with each other. Okay. I would say around age 30 was when I realized, like, like, I feel like I have a good intuition for writing, but around 30, I'm like, oh no, I should really, like, 
spend more time writing my stories. Because I would always like, write a first draft and be like, oh, that'll be fun to draw. And then I just draw it. Okay. And then when I got to the end of it, it wasn't as satisfying. But with Pretty Violent Issue 1, I really wrote like five or six drafts of Issue 1. And like really, really like tried to find exactly what I wanted to say and how I wanted to start a series that's going to start this way and end this way. And there was a lot of pushing pieces and all that stuff. So just learning how important writing is, which sounds dumb to say, but like as an artist, I really figured that out. And then yeah. and I like, I tried to do Pretty Violent by myself for a very short time. I was like, oh, this isn't, this isn't working. So I went crawling back to Jason. I do. Like, I guess like, yeah, I have like similar lessons, like where it's like, I think you, I don't know. Like the, I, like people throw out like 10,000 hours to master stuff, and I just feel like, I, I don't know if I believe that just because it just feels like we're always learning, like, and so you're, I don't know, you, like, it just it feels like I learned more this week than I did last week, and you just keep building. Now, is there anything that you learned that somebody taught you that saved you to like a mentor, or just somebody that you looked up to that part of a lesson on you, some valuable knowledge that actually did save the time in that relation? Well, for a number of years, I, I shared a studio with uh, Ryan Opley, who's drawing Amazing Spider Man right now. Yeah. And so I would be drawing my mini comics and my fanzines, and then also doing like freelance for like, Disney and all that stuff. So I was working on like real game and just worked for fun. And you know, we would always be looking at what each other was doing. And he, Ryan is not shy about giving you an unsolicited critique, which is great. So he'd always be like, oh, you wasted so much time drawing that crowd. You could have like, you could have like set the camera between two buildings and then like you would have saved yourself a lot of time by drawing these big buildings with like a little crowd in the middle and then the reader's brain would fill in the rest of the crowd that's hiding behind the building. So just a lot of stuff about composition and how to lay out your panels like a director. So that so that yeah, yeah, so that you're not wasting resources. I actually don't know if I've been answered. You're really good, so you don't need it. I think it's you've not, never needed a mentor. It's, 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 not, not, it's, it's not being as good or anything. But I think that uh, to me, like it just looks like writers' processes are so different from each other. But I don't know if anyone shares like the same processes and like I've always been a tremendously slow writer but somebody who's like really dedicated so like Spencer writes scripts like to our colorist like he writes his own comics and he writes scripts like faster than me like when he's writing them same with you actually you're yeah. a way faster writer than me I think that's actually why we don't do so much you don't do yeah. yeah. you don't no. yeah 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 yeah, I don't. So that's like why, like, remember, like, this isn't an argument or anything. Like, <laughs> yeah. remember when you were like, you were like telling me, you're like, write this, write this. And I was like, wait a second. Like, that's because of, like, I'm just such a slow writer. I can even think about everything before I type it. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know. But that's, like, the moral of the story to me is just that, like, different people have different writing styles and stuff. And, like, I have mine that works for me. And, uh, nobody's coming to shit. <laughs> <laughs> what do you like to do for rest relaxation? Are are you first? Because I actually feel like we're both the same about this. It's like, because like we we, we actually talk, so like we went on the I went to uh, his house last week and we just worked the entire time. It was like the busiest week of our lives because we were just riding like twenty four hours. It was so fun, but that was yeah, yeah. fun though. It didn't feel like work. We went yeah, yeah. so like we went to Vasquez Rocks, which is where they shot like Captain Kirk fighting the gun. Oh yes. So we went to really? Vasquez Rocks and just hiked for like three hours yeah, yeah. while writing. And we just like plotted out like an entire I I mean like that's seven much, issues like six issues of a comic. Yeah, yeah. And like and I was just typing on my phone, yeah. like, okay, oh what if we do this? And we just typed, and then the next day we went to Disneyland, because I work for Disney, so we can get it for free. So we just went to Disneyland, and we're writing while waiting in line, at the rides, and we're for free. free. Well, we're for, uh, that's yeah. a perk. That's a, it's <laughs> that's a good perk. That's a heck of a perk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
uh, I'm one of the designers on uh, DuckTales, so right. So I'm at Disney TV right now. Okay. Yeah, we just worked yeah, yeah, literally right. for like four days straight while you were at my house. Yeah, yeah. But I'm a dad, I've got three kids, so like, I like to go on bike rides with my family, go camping. Um, but there's always this weird pull, like, I'm, if I'm not working, I'm wasting my time, mm-hmm. which I'm trying to, like, sort through, because it's not, it's not a healthy mentality, but, like, we only live one life, I want to get as much stuff done as I can, right? Yes. So, yes. <laughs> I, I've been actually, like, I guess, like, you reminded me, but yeah, I've been, like, doing a lot more, like, I'm like running on my own, like in the mountains or whatever, and like just. But like even that is like just like a like while, while you're isolated again, like you just start thinking about stories yeah. and stuff. And so it's you're just like two, and you're just yeah, yeah. Just, I just pop into your head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. I, and so it's yeah. like four idea generation. And I love watching movies. I think both of us are movie fans. Huge. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, so, so like that's like uh, something you do to. Relax, but at the same time, like I think whenever, well, whenever I'm watching a movie, you are like thinking about your own stories or just storytelling in general, and, like getting I don't know, yeah, yeah, like you're just being, being a part of the building process. up your uh, creative well, like, you're finding new yeah. pattern recognition. Like it's like in storytelling, it's like oh, they led from A to B yes. that way. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's yeah. a that's a yeah. nice yeah. thing. Yeah. Taking it apart. Yeah. Yeah. What kind of movies do you like to watch? What are some of your favorites? Oh gosh! I mean, like usually when I'm talking about favorite movies, I break down by like director. Okay. So it's like uh, Let's start with the good part. We both love this. Scorsese, uh, Paul Thomas Anderson, yeah, uh, like Tarantino. Like the, the, I mean, it sounds so basic to say like those are like super popular ones, but this is a stupid question to ask right now. Oh, don't do it. <laughs> Have you seen Fan and Bread yet, though? Oh, have I seen it yet? No, cut this out. Okay. Um, one of my favorite movies okay. of all time is MacGruber. Oh, uh, it's Magruber. the stupidest comedy <laughs> of all time, but it's one of my favorites. And then, like, Magnolia is, like, my other favorite, just because it's got a ton of monologues. And I just like a, a nice, well-written scene. And that's, like, start to finish, that's all that movie is, is, like, writing, 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 writing. I couldn't... I, I actually am kind of, like, a movie snob a little bit like I like more than me more so I like so like Woody Allen is like one of my favorites Pedro Almodovar um like Ingmar Bergman yeah Martin Scorsese I like Darren Aronofsky quite a lot actually and then yeah Paul Thomas Anderson what is your favorite birthday and why was it your favorite birthday that is a good question it's a good one Okay, so I hear yours. It's going to be sad. So like, I'll, I'll make it not sad. It's not going to be a childhood so, so, birthday, I'll tell you that one. No, no, it will be. No, this is not a good reason, though. Because I, I just don't celebrate my birthday or anything. Uh, most of my family's not really in my life or anything. But, like, when I was 11, my parents, like, took us to this, like, kind of, uh, like, gaming place or whatever, like, that has... Like a cheap? Like mini golf and like oh, arcades okay. and like basketball, yeah, yeah, yeah for Calvin. And then, uh, my, and then like, it wasn't a surprise birthday party or something. I was probably like eleven or twelve or something. And then, but then like, I remember like when I looked at the cake, it was like the first time I'd seen it. It was like hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, why would they want? Why did they think I want a hamburger birthday cake? <laughs> and then that's the end of the story. <laughs> Wait, was it a giant hamburger? Or was yeah, it was like shape of a hamburger. It was like a giant, like fake, yeah, like hamburger okay. uh-huh. shape cake. Okay, I thought it was just yeah. a big hamburger. Like we know you like burgers, <laughs> so yeah. instead of a cake. But that's a, that's my best memory. Um, my birthdays are all so great. How could I possibly? Um, uh, I mean, like you think it would have to be like a kid birthday. Cause that's like when you care when you can't buy presents for yourself, right? So it's like oh, I remember this. It's my thirty-fourth birthday. Uh, my wife just—I was—I was working at Cartoon Network at the time, and like every every day leading up to my birthday for like two weeks, the receptionist would call me like, "Hey, Derek, you have something? You come down to the front desk." And it was my wife that dropped off like. Uh, cookies that she made in the shapes of our my wife's an artist too, so she made cookies in the shape of our heads and like decorated them and like 
the next day was like a giant Reese's peanut butter cup that she made, like this big. And like one day it was like a bouquet of like different fruits and stuff. And then like I think it was just because she knew I'd been really stressed out. She's like, oh, I want to make this birthday special. So like for two weeks she just gave me a bunch of different presents. It was wow. cool. You were an adolescent, 12 years old, 14, somewhere in there. Think back, picture your bedroom. What posters or pictures did you have in your bedroom wall? Savage Dragon. I had a, a giant poster that I got at WonderCon, probably like maybe whenever Youngblood Six came out. So like it was a big poster of like all the characters from like Youngblood Six, um, Nintendo Power centerfolds, definitely. Um, the Bash Brothers poster, because I grew up in the Bay Area, so it's like gotta have that Mark McGuire. Jose Canseco poster, and you know, just like, oh, I had a poster signed by John Romita and Stanley of like Spider Man uh, hanging above a bunch of like his Rogues Gallery. They actually, is it actually they signed it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You still have it? Yeah, it's framed under wow. my under my childhood bed at my parents' house. Yeah, so I should bring it home. <laughs> And like uh, I, I did the Nintendo Power stuff too. Yeah. Like, and I remember like a Hulk poster and like Vampire Hunter D. And then I remember having all the Ninja Turtles stuff too. I was like completely obsessed with Ninja Turtles. This is a hypothetical situation. You've probably heard this kind of question before. It's a tough one. You're stuck on a reserve island. No lights, no power, no super luxury. You can have one book. I'll say a set of books if you want to read. Okay. This is the one book you want to have with you. I mean, this is just for fun. This isn't about some yeah. high book tactic. This is just, I want something to read. I'm going to say a comic book just because that's what we're talking about today. Yeah. Uh, probably the Scud, the Scud the Disposable Assassin, okay. the whole shebang. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That was like my, that, reading that for the first time was a huge turning point in me deciding what kind of content I wanted to make. Like, what kind of stories do I want to tell? Because it's so wild and crazy. I'm like, oh, you can do this? Like, you can make comics this weird? And it really, like, flipped the switch to make me realize, like, oh, I can pursue some of my weirder ideas. Uh, I, I, like, at first I was like, what's the first thing that pops in my head? And then I was like, what is the most boring answer? And then I was like, which one should I give? It's the and same then, book. But it's the same book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's an uh, origin of species by Charles Darwin. <laughs> um, I love I love uh, that book. It's, it's totally useful. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're a big reader, right? I get it. <laughs> this is another hypothetical. Maybe. Could happen someday. Image Comics says, we want to make an action figure of each one of you. What's your accessory that says something about you? Slurpee cut. Slurpee cut? Slurpee cut. Slurpee cut. I used to have a Spider-Man. My dad got this thing at 7-Eleven. It was Spider-Man holding a Slurpee. It's a big cardboard cutout. Yeah. He says, how much for that? And he paid for it and brought it home. Man, I needed a dad like that. Well, my accessory is like a hat like this. Like, yeah. the one time... I've thrown one house party. And I gave out hats like this for everyone <laughs> to wear. Really? <laughs> so like everyone could wear my same hat. That's so cool. Looking <laughs> back at your life, do you have any regrets? Anything you would do differently? Some people would say, you know, I, you know, I am where I am because of what I did, and here I am, and I'm happy. So there's anything you say, oh, I changed this. I would do this a little differently. I, I yeah, yeah. I and this, yeah, I just would have cried harder, younger, because like I realize the more that like we've like on what we have and like you see like what's coming next and stuff it's all the result of hard work I think yeah and so like I would have just started working harder and mine's very similar to that where my first comic book series 15 years ago was Pirate Club through Slave Labor Graphics nobody gave a shit like it came out and it landed like a wet farm and and it was really devastating because I was really proud of it and I worked really hard and, and I took it too personally like, oh, no one cares. I guess I'm just done. He was like, all right, I guess I'm just going to do it for fun and not really show anyone. And I think that I, I uh, deprived myself of learning opportunities by not trying. It's like, well, this one failed, but the next one I'm going to write better. I'm going to draw better. And I'm going to submit it to publishers. And the next one's going to do good. And 
I kind of let myself get tripped up by my own perceived failure. Good luck to you, Violet. I'm looking forward to more of it. And if people want to have fun and a good time, that is the book to pick up. Because, hey, people love it or hate it, and you can't ask for better press than that. Yeah. Nothing in the middle, no wobbling, love or hate. Yeah. Everybody will love it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're, thank you very much. Thank we're glad it's doing well. Thank you so much.